and we're good to go, Your Worship. Awesome, Dina. Uh, thank you. And uh, before calling to order, I'd like to wish everybody in Wasaga Beach uh, good morning. Those watching, a good morning. Your Worship, a good morning. Deputy Mayor Bray, good morning. Our fellow councillors, good morning. And all staff who's there, good morning. Um, calling this meeting to order of the um, Community Services Section of the Coordinated Committee. Uh, if I don't see any disclosures of preliminary interest, but if there is during the meeting, please don't be uh, hesitant to call it out and we'll look into that. Um, community service section, I don't see any deputations, presentations, petitions, public meetings, unfinished business, or uh, now we're gonna move on to other agencies. Um, and at this time, I'd like to call our chief um, to the table, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and good morning. Um, the fire department responded to 114 calls for service in the month of January. Um, this report does note that we had one structure fire. That was actually the one that occurred on River Road East that I provided uh, details about at our last coordinated committee meeting. Uh, there are a few other incidents worth noting. Uh, early Sunday morning of January 31st, we responded to the report of a person through the ice in the river near Schoonertown Bridge. Firefighters in our ice water dry suits deployed our inflatable rapid deployment craft and were able to locate the person. Uh, they were on the island just off of Island View Crescent. Uh, this person had fallen through the ice a number of times before making it onto the island. Um, he was brought to shore by firefighters and assessed by paramedics, so he was, uh, he was fine. Um, we also utilized our drone on that call. We put that up in the air and it helped us uh, locate the individual. Um, the fire department, speaking of our equipment, fire department's uh, UTV um, has come into play three times in the last month. Uh, early in January, it was used at the Arnell Toboggan Hill uh, to transport a patient that had a broken femur at the bottom of that hill and we brought them uh, up to a waiting ambulance. Later in the month, it was used to reach a snowmobile that was on fire in the trails off of Veterans Way. And again, it was used to access the trails to assist a resident who was walking his dog when the dog went into medical distress. So we were able to help out with that, uh, that incident. Just a reminder on that UTV, that, was, uh, that unit was 100% donated to us a few years ago. Uh, there were several sponsors that helped with that, uh, but the initial fundraising drive was spearheaded by the Central Ontario ATV Club, who, who knew that we had a need. And, you know, sometimes we go for, for a year where we don't use it other than training, and then here we've used it three times in the last month. And the only other thing is lastly, the new pumper that I reported that was originally scheduled to be delivered in late January, uh, they were unable to get it moved from the U.S. to Ontario as early as they hoped. When it did arrive at the dealership in Woodstock, it had a few final touches done and is scheduled to be delivered to us today. So we're excited about that. And that's my report, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Chief. Uh, any questions of the Chief's report? Hmm. Seeing none, I want to thank the Chief again, and I need a mover and a seconder for this motion. Uh, Councillor Watson and Mayor Bifolci. All in favor? Oops. Thank you. Thank you. I carried seven, zero unanimously. Now moving into the consent agenda. I see that we have several items pulled. Um, I'll read them off. And if I've missed something, please let me know. I've been notified that 3.5.2 has been pulled. 3.5.3 has been pulled. 3.5.4 has been pulled and 3.5.5 been pulled. Um, that being said, I'm gonna read the um, consent agenda motion. Uh, absent of those 
um, already called. Resolve that the community services section of the coordinated committee hereby uh, received the February 11th, 2021 consent agenda uh, 3.4 through 3.7, and that all recommendations contained therein be adopted, excluding agenda items pulled from the motion and voted on separately. Could I get a mover and a seconder, please? Uh, Council Berlanger and Councillor Foster, all in favor? Thank you. Move to seven to one unanimously. Now, Nina, I, I'm sorry, Dina, I just want to clarify something. Um, on my last motion, I failed to read the resolve uh, section of it. Should I reread it or what we've done is fine? The results section? I, I heard you say that um, it was carried unanimously. Yes, um, but I failed to read resolve that the community oh. service section. That's fine. Okay. You don't okay. have to reread it. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. That being said, uh, we'll go to 3.5.2, Acting Facility um, Foreman's Report dated February 11th, 2021, Re, uh, Custodian Contract Tender um, Recommendation, and I believe Councillor um, Belanger has pulled this. Joe, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, yes. Uh, this is a, an extension of two years to a contract uh, instead of going out to tender. And uh, in looking at the uh, two facilities involved, in the case of Town Hall, through the course of the contract, the average annual increase was $1,200. Yet in year five, the increase is $3,800. In the case of Public Works, uh, the average annual increase was between five and seven hundred dollars, and in the last year of the contract, the increase is thirty-eight hundred dollars. Uh, no explanation as to why there would be a significant jump in our cost in the last year, and uh, you know that being the case, I I was wondering why we wouldn't go out for tender uh, to see if we couldn't get a better deal for the municipality. So. I don't know if someone can clarify that. Chris, uh, could you respond, please? Certainly, thank you, Councillor Kinney. Uh, through you, uh, Councillor Belanger, uh, I was one of the staff that uh, negotiated these prices. Uh, there's a little bit of history working with this uh, contractor and they lived through a renovation both at the uh, Public Works building as well as Town Hall in 2020. The current three-year contract is set to expire in April, uh, but we had some performance issues as well that we were trying to uh, work through and uh, um, the, the contractor has been uh, working with the town prior to this contract as well. And the ultimate uh, negotiation uh, was a more complex uh, cleaning regimen because of the ad addition of additional offices in both of the facilities. Uh, we did not pay extra in the year when the construction made cleaning more complicated and we gave a minor increase in year four so that we have time to evaluate their performance. And uh, that's why you see a more sizable increase. I think the average for the two years is 11% across both buildings. Uh, thank you for that clarification. I was also going to ask that I thought maybe through the uh, COVID uh, that uh, that would have also uh, probably uh, resulted in some increased requirements. But if, if I could uh, make a suggestion for consideration is that uh, given this will go out for tender the following year and, and not to set a precedent, I would, I would rather that we maintain a more consistent annual increase. And if uh, a payment in lieu of additional work is required, that that's handled separately, just so that we're not uh, having public information out there that when we go to tender in the following year, that they uh, believe that 
they would be in line with the last year of this contract uh, might be a consideration. Thank you. Understood. Thank you. We will. Thank you, Chris. Uh, any any other questions on this motion? Not seeing any. Um, could I get a mover and a seconder, please? Uh, Deputy Mayor and Council Belanger. Uh, all in favor? Thank you. And again, Dina, I forgot to read this, so I'll read it all the way through. I apologize. Whereas bylaw 2018-28 authorized the mayor and the clerk uh, authority and direct to ex execute the above noted agreement and document extends to any renewal agreement or administrative amendments to the agreement and documents to extended and executed by the mayor and clerk and resolve that the community service section of the coordinated committee uh, recommend that council approve the three year uh, town hall and public works cleaning contract with CA Sellers Cleaning Services Limited to, to um, uh, amended for an additional uh, two years extension from May 1, 2021 to April 30, 2023 for the amount of $134,000 plus applicable taxes per attached schedule A. And we've already called that motion, and I thank everybody. Um, now we're going to move on to um, section 3.5.3, and I believe it's Councillor Foster who's pulled this one. Dave, go ahead, please. Okay. Sorry, did you actually call the vote on that last one? Quick question. Good question. Good question. Thanks. I believe I did. Dina, can you just confirm? Yes, you called the vote actually before reading the motion. Okay. Yeah, yeah that was my mistake. <laughs> no, no, my guy. Anyway, 3.5.3, um, this is the fundraising and sponsorship coordinators report. And I'm, I'm actually, I pulled this just more for information because um, th this, this position is going to be fundamental to uh, the arena and library. Um, going forward. So I thought, and I see Pam's just popped on. So I thought most of us probably already know Val, but I thought it would be good for the benefit of council, but also for the public watching to, uh, to learn a little bit about this. So if with indulgence from the chair and committee, I'd ask maybe that uh, Pam take a moment just to explain this one to us. Good morning through uh, you, Councillor Kinney. Uh, Val, are you on i see that your mic is off no you're no. there you are Hi. um we'd like to welcome val dixon to our team as fundraising coordinator val will be uh responsible for creating a 30 60 90 day and one year plan for developing a fundraising campaign for our new library and twin pad arena project um, she has some fantastic ideas and she's already gotten the wheels turning. I'll just give Val a moment to uh, say a few words about this project as we really get things rolling. Val, did you want to just say a few words to Council? Sure, thank you. Thank you so much, Pam, and to uh, Councillor Kinney. Good morning, everybody. Um, I just want to share the fact that I'm very honoured and very excited to be, such, be part of such an exciting project um, that's going to be such an impactful you know, presence here within the community. And I'm really looking forward to maybe touching base with each and every one of you to kind of hear your ideas and to know what you're thinking about the project so that we can work collaboratively together to be successful. And that I've been working diligently and collaboratively with like uh, Michael Jennings to get a plan in place and a fundraising plan that uh, through both Chris and Pam I'll be able to share with you along the way. So thank you for the indulgence and thanks for letting me be here today. Thank you. <laughs> I see that um, our worship um, wants to uh, add some comments. Thank you. Uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to say um, Val's been here uh, every day, um, diligently working away at this, and uh, the intent is that she will come forward at a future meeting and uh, update council and uh, update the community at that time as to um, different ways that uh, everyone can contribute to, to the, this awesome project. So thanks, Val. And Councillor yeah. Kenny, I'd be happy to move that motion. <laughs> Councillor Kenny, you're on mute. Uh, hopefully I'm not now, thank you. Uh, it's it's kind of bad when you see your mouth moving and nothing's coming out, but okay. Uh, that being said, uh, welcome Val, and I'm excited to have you with the team. Um, I'll just read the motion, try and do that first this time, then call the vote. Um, Fundraising and Sponsorship Coordinator's Report dated February 11th, 2021, Re Fundraising and Sponsorship Plan for the Twin Pad Arena and Library Project. That the Community Services Section of the Coordinating Committee does hereby receive the Fundraising and Sponsorship Plan Report for information. Um, mover and seconder, I believe, Councillor Foster. I need a seconder, please. Uh, Deputy Mayor Bray, and all in favor, please. Thank you. That would be 7-0 unanimous. Okay, now moving down to 3.5.4, Director Recreation um, Events and Facilities Report dated February 11th, 2021, rejoint use of cost sharing agreements with SCDSB Elementary School in the Sunnydale Trail Division. I believe Councillor Belanger has pulled this one. Joe, please go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. I have a number of uh, points and questions, I guess. Uh, firstly, uh, I had uh, contacted our Director of Recreation and Facilities, Chris Roos, to just get a little bit of clarification because uh, recently, uh, we had a uh, presentation related to a $4.89 uh, million dollar investment into the park block at Sunnydale. And I just wanted to clarify if any amount of the $1.579 in uh, uh, related to the partnership with the school board uh, was included. And uh, he did clarify that there was some overlap related to an expanded parking lot. And uh, Chris, you can confirm, but I believe you said that was in the neighbor of neighborhood of $800,000. Um, but uh, the other thing, and I, I, I hadn't discussed with you at the time, Chris, but, uh, and maybe you could clarify, is uh, in following up uh, quite a number of uh, school board schools uh, would build the facility totally and pay for everything and then they would rent space to the municipality as required as opposed to a partnership and I'm, I'm not quite sure what the benefit is one over the other uh, but maybe you could clarify that and uh I'll let you do. I'll let you do that, and then I'll go on to my next point, if I could. Definitely, there are opportunities for the town to rent gymnasium space from the school board. We, in fact, do that on a regular basis through our youth center. We use the Worsley Gym uh, once a week, and uh, the school board is open to these arrangements uh, when possible. The discussion that uh, um, builds out the the actual construction cost for the town in Sunnydale Trails is because we are enhancing that facility. So a, a, a stock government, provincial government funded school would typically have a, I would say mediocre gym. It, it, it might be able to be split down the middle, but it wouldn't fit a full size basketball court. Uh, what the town's uh, capital investment in this facility is is a uh, um, what, what it costs to build out that gym probably the equivalent of what a high school would get so we're going to have a full-size 
basketball court, which can break down into two full-size volleyball courts. And this adds on an additional proportion of square footage to the school build. And as well, we've uh, worked with them in our partnership to ensure that the lobby works well and it points towards the public parking lot that we'll use in the park block. Uh, there are sufficient bathrooms out in the front areas and that the school can be cordoned off so that we can have uh, community groups in there on evenings and weekends when the kids are out of school. So the additional enhancements to the typical elementary school accounts for the cost that the town is investing in this facility. And uh, in order to do that, we've partnered in for a consistent amount of use uh, so that the school board doesn't have to hold the long-term operating costs of a building that's a little bit bigger than what they would have built originally. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Thank you for, th ahead, thank, you, thank you for that clarification. Uh, you also indicated that the uh, school board is close to uh, finalizing an agreement for the land in the Sunnydale uh, development. And it came to my uh, attention that uh, in, a, in a report by the school board some time ago, uh, at one point, uh, there was also a location in the east, I believe, in the in the area of uh, the end of Wally Drive or uh, somewhere in that uh, neighborhood uh, for a potential elementary school. And that at one point that was actually their preferred location. Uh, clearly through this process, the school board uh, very much underestimated uh, the timelines and requirement for a new elementary school. And uh, I'm, I'm wondering if there's been any analysis as to where the children actually reside today within Wasega Beach. Because my understanding is when this school opens, it will already be at full capacity. That we are, uh, we're in a situation now, and I believe there's a, been a one year delay now in the completion of the school to the fall of 23. But uh, clearly, we're going to be busing some elementary school children out of our community for a period of time. And uh, I'm a little concerned that, uh, you know, if, if we build this school and open this school, and it's not in the, the proximity of where the most children are currently residing. And I'll, I'll add to that is that if we look at the Elm development and the progression there and the number of homes that have been Can built and occupied. Point of, point of order here, um, we have an agreement before us and I'm just not sure that this is still on track um, with that. We're not talking about other locations or anything like that. So I, I just would like to see the conversation get back to the motion before us. Um, Your Honor, I believe this is uh, pertinent. I'm not suggesting we uh, change locations. I'm asking uh, what analysis has been done, but I also have a concern as to uh, residents. If we open this school and it it's in a field as opposed to a development, uh, you know, further further to the fact that the progression of build out in in Sunnydale versus Elm is significantly different. Uh, we also I've just heard that 300 acres of that development have been sold to another developer. And, and I'm just wondering if our planning department can give us any indication of, of what we believe the actual build out and what occupancy and what children will be living in the vicinity of that location at the time the school opens. I think that's a pertinent question. Thank you, Councillor Belanger. I see um, our director of planner, Doug Herons here. I was wondering, Doug, if you could fill in some of the blanks. I know you can't do a whole bunch, but do your best. Thank you. Um, thank you very much and good morning. Um, Councillor Belanger made a very good point that there, the school board is anxious to get a new elementary school as soon as possible. Um, there are uh, there is a school block in the Elm development, and there is also uh, two school blocks in this development with Pacific Homes. Uh, what changed is uh, an immediate need for the school board to, to get new desks and seats for the students. And um, what they're looking for is which development is ready to go the soonest so that they can get the school in as quickly as possible. 
uh, this Pacific Developments is that project. Uh, Pacific is more advanced, uh, the most advanced with the school block in it. Uh, in fact, uh, Pacific have advised us that in releasing their first block of 100 units for sale, they've completely sold out. Um, they anticipate that uh, they'll release another 100 units for sale this spring. Um, the developer tells us that they anticipate uh, going to construction with homes, uh, 50 of them this year, another 100 next year. Um, so the, we, we anticipate that what will happen is with the new developer to the north, Councillor Belanger mentioned that uh, another developer has picked up 300 acres to the north, all within Sunnydale Trails. Um, there will be uh, a, a flurry of building activity within the Sunnydale Trails. So although the school board will be building a brand new school at the same location where Pacific will be building brand new homes at the same time, um, just the confluence of activity, we anticipate that it, it will drive even more homes in Sunnydale Trails. Families uh, moving to Wasaga Beach, they're looking for convenience and if they can buy a home close to a school, um, that, that will drive sales both for Pacific and for Zancor Homes, which just bought and are really pursuing um, uh, aggressively bringing their 300 acres online as well. Um, now the same story is happening with Elm. I'm sorry, I'm getting into a broader picture here, but Elm, they too are aggressively building out on the east end of town. Their school block is in their phase three of development. So we don't anticipate that they will be getting to the, the lands where the school block is uh, for at least another two, possibly three years. Um, so th that's really the crux of why this school is going first. Pacific is a little more advanced in, in uh, moving forward with getting a school, school block uh, ready and serviced and underway. Thank you for that clarification, Doug. I think that's important for our public to have heard that. Thank you, uh, Mr. Heron. And uh, is there any more questions on this? Oh, thank you, um, our CAO, uh, Mr. Vanderbilt Coor. Please go ahead. Thank you. And uh, I don't profess to speak for the school board, but I can say that the school board did receive approval for this school uh, several years ago and it needed to have the availability of a registered plan of subdivision and servicing available in order to build the school. And the developer was negotiating with the uh, developer to the north with respect to the extension of the um, sanitary sewer, the construction of the pumping station, and the extension of the water mains to service this development. Um, those agreements were put in place last year, and as Council is aware, uh, construction of the sewage pumping station commenced and the extension of the sanitary and water mains uh, have, um, are being worked on as, as we speak. So all the various pieces of this development are coming together, and as the Director of Planning and Economic Initiatives has indicated, you know, the developer um, has started pre-selling um, units and uh, certainly was very anxious to proceed with his development but needed to ensure that servicing was was in place so now that that is happening um, things can certainly move forward and I you know I think the school board is very anxious to proceed and uh, are looking forward to initiating construction and seeing the school opened uh, for September 2023. Thank you for that added information. Uh, any more questions, uh, comments? Thank you so much. I need a mover and a seconder for this motion, please. Uh, and her worship, Nina. Um, all in favor, please. Moving 7-0 unanimously. Uh, now, as usual, I did not read it, so I'm gonna read it now, and I apologize. Um, that the community service section of the coordinating committee received the director's recreation, uh, events, and uh, facilities report regarding formalization and partnership with this 
Simcoe County District Board for the provisions of the joint use recreation facilities as part of the new elementary school in the Sunnydale subdivision for information. And further that staff be directed to bring forward to, for council considerations at the appropriate time and bylaws authorizing the mayor and clerk to sign the new Wasaga, Wasaga Beach Elementary School joint use facility and cost sharing agreement um, substantially as circulated confidentially in councils as schedule A. Um, now let's move on to section 3.5.5 directors and uh, sorry director recreation events and facility and director of public uh, yeah, and director of library services report dated February 11th, 2021, re-Twin Pad Arena Library Quest for qualifications of general contractor. And this, this one I believe was pulled by Councillor Belanger. Joel, please go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, uh, I, I won't be supporting this motion, but I, I do believe that Council will approve it. Uh, but I, I would like to make a recommendation that in this process that uh, we have Colliers and MJMA uh, provide us with contractors that they have worked on, worked with on similar size projects over the last five years and uh, whether they uh, came in uh, on budget or over budget. I think that information uh, would be uh, pertinent information in making the final decision. Thank you. Thank you, um, Council Blanger. Any other questions, comments? Uh, I need a mover and a seconder, please. Uh, Councilor Foster. Can you read the motion, please, Mark? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. That the community service section of the coordinated committee recommend to council that it receive the request for pre-qualification of general contractor for the twin pad library report as information and further that the council directs staff to work with Collier International Project Management Consultant and the construction steering group to develop and post a RFPQ of general contractors to build the Twin Pad Arena and Library Facility. And further that council direct staff to work with project management consultants and the construction steering group to evaluate submitted RFPQ proposals and bring a recommendation to council for the selection of qualified general contractors to be requested to bid on the fixed price construction tender package for the twin <clears throat> for the twin pad arena and library project. Thank you. Uh, any other questions on that? And I believe I had <clears throat> apologized a uh, first mover of cons of um, uh, Councillor Foster. Do we have a second mover? Uh, Councillor Watson. And could I call a vote, please? Seeing uh, six to one and uh, Council Blanchet in opposition. Thank you for that. Um, and at this time, I don't see anything else that we have addressed on this. And I'd like to turn this meeting over to Councillor Watson. Mark, you have the accounts uh, to do yet. Oh. Sorry, departmental accounts. Um, departmental accounts resolve that the departmental accounts for the month of January. Sorry, what? Mark, just to interrupt there. The, those accounts haven't been pulled. They're part of the consent agenda. Oh, okay. I um, sit or stand corrected. Um, I'm looking that we're moving on to um, Public Works. Mm -hmm. And Councillor Watson, please. Thank you, Councillor Kinney, and good morning, everyone. Uh, 
This is the public works section of the coordinated committee. We have no deputations, presentations, commissions, or public meetings. We have no unfinished business. There are no agency reports. We'll now move into the consent agenda at this point. And my notes say that 4.5.4 has been pulled for discussion. Other than that, I don't see any. Uh, I'm assuming that's correct. So having noted that, uh, I will uh, read the, uh, the motion. Resolve that the public works section of coordinated committee hereby receives the February 11th, 2021 consent agenda items 4.4 through to 4.7, and that all the recommendations contained therein be adopted, excluding agenda items pulled from the motion and voted on separately. May I have a mover for that, please? Deputy Mayor Bray and the seconder, Councillor Foster. And I'll call the vote. Uh, those in favor? That looks like it's unanimous, I believe. Thank you. And uh, we'll go back to 4.5.4 engineering that was pulled by myself. And this is a report on the uh, golf course road traffic calming information report. Um, my comments would be uh, that I'm glad to see that the uh, speed tables in the report appear to have had an effect on the overall speed, bringing it down. And I'm also okay with doing an intersection analysis at Marlwood Avenue and Golf Course Road for a stop sign. I see value in, in the analysis, not so much for volume of traffic coming out from a tournament, but to place a stop sign at that location to work in conjunction with the speed tables. I acknowledge in the report that stop signs are not recommended for speed control generally, but I feel more than one remedy is required in this area to address the speeding issue. We are, all, we are dealing with a long stretch of uninterrupted roadway from Bells Park all the way to the intersection with Klondike Park Road. The only limiting factor in this stretch are the two rather sharp curves going south past Marlwood Avenue. A stop sign at Marlwood Avenue would break up this long stretch and have the added bonus of dropping the speed near the speed tables, which will help mitigate the noise of trucks, which has now become an issue due to the speed tables. I believe a stop sign at this location will help deal with two issues, speeding and volume of traffic from the golf course. It would also help prepare for increased volume that may be generated if the golf course receives approval for their proposed plan of subdivision, which could potentially add another 65 homes in that immediate area. I'm looking for cost-effective solutions and effective solutions. I would also suggest uh, a reduction of the speed limit starting at Zoo Park Road to Klondike to 40 kilometers. Sometimes it takes more than one deterrent to make a difference and influence driving behavior. In the case of Golf Course Road, the big expense has been the speed tables, which are not solving the issue and has added to the noise factor. For a relatively small investment for signage for a stop sign, speed reduction to 40 kilometers an hour, or possibly uh, something to deal with heavy trucks would all be helpful and, and in, in tandem um, help mitigate the speed in, in this area. I remember a number of years ago, we had requests for uh, air brake signs in residential areas to warn trucks to not use their air brakes because of the noise. That seemed to be effective at the time and we did that. So for these reasons, I, I cannot support the resolution, uh, resolution as it is uh, worded right now that we're not going to do anything further except for the stop sign. I can, and, and as I said in my report, um, I can support the stop sign, but not the resolution. Thank you very much. Are there any other comments on this at this time? Uh, uh, Mayor Voy Fulci. Thank you. I would just ask maybe Kevin can um, speak a bit to his report because I think um, he did address some of the concerns about the number of trucks and, and truck traffic and things like that and that there was reading. So um, Kevin, can you just speak to it a bit? Uh, certainly is yes, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, 
So yeah, the, the information report is quite exhaustive and, and certainly speaks to the background in terms of how we got to where we are today. Um, through the evaluation, it was, um, you know, when the concerns were bur- first brought forward, it was specific to um, enforcement and limited enforcement. And, and we can appreciate the resources needed from the OPP to have a, a presence along that corridor. Uh, we received the uh, request uh, to consider traffic calming measures. We went through that analysis and presented the preferred alternatives, which, uh, as you know, have been presented today and, and implemented already. Uh, we've gone back and we've looked at the uh, the data pre and post construction of the tables to support that you know they are slowing down at these tables and and they're slowing down at least almost 20 kilometers per hour so they are proven to be effective. We do recognize and and we did recognize through the evaluation of the speed tables that noise will be a, a possible um, result of of implementing these measures. Uh, There were concerns brought forward post-construction about uh, truck traffic, increased truck traffic and the large noise generated therefrom. Uh, There were also concerns brought forward about uh, volume of trucks um, delivering and hauling material to one of the the developments in the East End. Uh, Just as as I mentioned in my report, there are these these tube counters that also have classifiers which help establish what type of vehicle is uh, traveling along these corridors and that's everything from a motorcycle to a tractor trailer and when we start to get into the statistics about the volume of, of traffic that is is actually going along this corridor typically you'll see a triaxle truck that's doing long hauls for material and and and, and that was less than one percent of, of the total traffic through again the, the period of time that was evaluated post-construction um, and again the, the truck traffic less than four percent so uh, the numbers aren't um, concerning at, at which they're 20 or 25 percent. As it indicated in my report, we do have the ability through development uh, applications and and through those um, the construction of new development to, to help identify preferred haul routes. And uh, we need to understand where that material is coming from. Is it coming from the east, the south, or the west? And, and that certainly helps us establish what that preferred haul route is. And then we'll certainly look to implement mitigating increased truck traffic along that corridor. Obviously they're gonna need to use that corridor to get to the new development uh, uh, on the Marwood lands. But, um, you know, the measures that we've implemented so far have proven effective. And and as we committed in the report, I think uh, the always stop uh, warrant analysis will be done in the summer. And um, with respect to the, the posted speed limit, that certainly isn't something that um, you know, we, we consider during this process when we start to look at um, establishing posted speed limits, there are guidelines for that too through TAC or the Transportation Association of Canada uh, that we apply kind of an objective, uh, I guess, assessment of engineering factors similar to how we look at um, traffic calming measures where you're looking at the corridor, you're looking at the geometry, the the road characteristics, the boulevard treatment, cycling and, and pedestrian exposure, the number of entrances, uh, arbitrarily lowering a speed limit doesn't necessarily result in reduced um, uh, speeds. And, and then certainly it'll put us into that position again where non-compliance, we don't have OPP able to enforce such provisions. And, and I think people will naturally travel at, at the um, credible posted speeds to match the expectations of of the road and the driver behavior. So um, again, a lot of the information is really just a summary of what's been presented so far. And it was really just to acknowledge that uh, these efforts to date, there are still some concerns from some of the neighborhoods and um, you know, we have a commitment to to return in uh, the summer to do that all way uh, traffic analysis for the stop control. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Um, uh, Councillor Belanger? Yes, thank you. Uh, obviously, I live in uh, this area too, and I would agree with uh, Councillor Watson that I, I would support a stop sign as the next step, and that, that could potentially uh, resolve uh, quite a bit of the issues. And uh, But I, I would think that would be the next step, and uh, hopefully... Um, the residents in the area would be satisfied with the results of that step. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Belanger. Are there any other comments at this time? 
uh, I guess I'll just sum up and say that uh, uh, what I'm suggesting is that it, it takes more than one deterrent. Um, stop sign, I think, would be helpful, and I also think a reduction in speed along with the speed table. So, uh, putting that out. So, I will now um, read the motion. And it is resolved that the public works section of coordinated committee does hereby receive the golf course road traffic calming information report for information and further that the public works section recommend to council that no further actions by staff be undertaken at this time to address issues being raised about golf course road with the exception of the all way stop warrant analysis at the intersection of Marlwood Avenue and golf course road in the summer of 2021. May I have a mover for that, please? Councillor Foster and seconder is Councillor Kinney. And now call the vote. Uh, those in favor? Thank you. And those opposed? So that is carried six to one. Thank you very much. And I believe that is the extent of the public works section of the agenda. Uh, is there any appetite to take a break or continue on? Uh, is that that for a break? <laughs> I can't that hear my, my five minutes, maybe. Oh, okay, that's that's fine. What time are we now? Nine four. We're almost nine. You want a ten, a ten minute break? Does that sound good or five minutes? <laughs> okay, five five minute break. We'll be back in five minutes. Thank you.
Tina, you'll let me know when we're going live. Yes, I will. If everybody's ready. Waiting on Sylvia. Uh, Dave, you got Laura's note, did you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did. Can someone play the Jeopardy theme song for Sylvia? <laughs> you can sing it. No, we can't. Okay, still waiting on Sylvia. I'll text her. We get started since it is only a can well we'll start a consent agenda etc and sylvia can join us we have quorum we can uh ready to go yeah you let me know yep go ahead okay thank you very much and welcome back to the development sections services section of the coordinated committee um just i will note that well councillor kinney thanked everyone this morning you didn't mention Valentine's Day. You missed that one, Mark. So happy Valentine's Day this weekend to everybody. Uh, we have no deputations, presentations, petitions, and public meetings. Under unfinished business, we have two items. And in talking to uh, our planner, it seems like one of them is going to be falling off relatively quickly. So that would be good. Uh, if there's no questions on those, there's no other agency reports at this moment. Under the consent agenda, I will note originally 5.5.3 and 5.5.4 were pulled. And then I did get a note, or as I like to say this just in, 5.5.1 is also, uh, it's requested that they get pulled as well. Um, so notwithstanding those three, I will read the uh, consent agenda and then ask for a mover and seconder. It's resolved that the development uh, section of the coordinated committee hereby receives the February 11th, 2021 consent ag agenda items 5.4 through 5.7 and that all recommendations contained therein be adopted, excluding the ex items pulled from the motion and voted on separately. And those I've already mentioned. So I'll ask for a mover, please. That's Councillor Kinney, a seconder. Councillor Wells, all those in favor? And that's carried unanimously. Thank you. Um, on 5.5.1, uh, that was Councillor Watson. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Councillor Foster. Um, quick question on, on 
this uh, uh, official plan uh, amendment or LPAD appeal. This file has not been before council in, in, in quite a while. And I, would, I guess my first question would be, what, what role uh, will uh, council have at the LPAD hearing that's coming up? Are we going to be involved uh, arguing for or against the, the appeal? Mr. Herr. Uh, thank you. The um, staff brought this report forward as an information report at this time, just to let council and the public know that there is uh, an appeal rendered. Um, just by way of explanation before I answer the question to Councillor Watson, um, there are three applications in play. There's an official plan amendment, a zoning bylaw amendment, and an application for plan of subdivision. The owner has appealed the official plan and the zoning bylaw. The owner has not appealed the subdivision at this point. Um, and the appeal is rendered on um, under the Planning Act. There is a certain time frame for council to make a decision, and that hasn't occurred at this point. So they've they've appealed it based on lack of decision under the Planning Act. Uh, staff intend to bring a report forward to council, um, and because it is uh, a legal matter, it would be something that we would discuss uh, or bring in camera, and we would have the solicitor present and explain the the, uh, the the legal situation and the planning situation to council and seek direction from council on, on how to proceed. Um, and that, that so um, there isn't a direct answer to Councillor Watson's question at this time, but it is something that we intend to bring forward to council for consideration. Thank you. Okay, uh, supplemental if I could. Uh, thank you, Mr. Heron. Um, what, what role, um, we, we just received correspondence just in the last couple of days from concerned citizens again about this uh, property. Uh, what role or what information will be supplied to the concerned citizens? As, as you've noted in your report, there's, we've had public meeting and there's uh, been a lot of pushback on this. So will they be informed and will they have a, a seat at the, at the hearing if they wish to? Uh, thank you, Councillor Watson. Uh, knowing that there is significant interest, the staff reached out to some of the citizens and to let them know that there was a report on this agenda and keep them apprised. And um, it would be um, a legal matter as to whether they, uh, I think the way it works is they would have to ask LPAT for a, a seat at the table as part of that appeal discussion. But uh, they can reach out to us and uh, we would be happy to give them some guidance on what their options are in terms of participation with the LPAT appeal. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. That being said, I will read the motion and then ask for a mover and seconder, please. Uh, that development services of the coordinated committee recommends to council that it received the report of the planner dated February 11th, 2021 regarding the appeals to the local planning appeal tribunal regarding applications for official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment by TPC at Marlwood Inc. for information. Mover, please. Councillor Kinney, seconder. Councillor Wells, all those in favor? And that's carried unanimously. Thank you. Um, on 5.5.3.2, I believe it was actually the subsection, uh, Councillor Watson pulled this. I will also, it's a good news, or I think it's going to be a good news report, but Councillor Watson, when you're finished, if, uh, if uh, Mr. Heron wants to add something, I'd invite that at the, uh, after your comments. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Councillor Foster. Uh, Really, I can almost address, I, I had pulled 5.5.4 also, I'm not sure if anyone else did, but uh, my comments are, are just very happy comments that uh, I'm looking at the uh, the value of construction for January 2021 at $26.7 million, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, last year at this time, it was 4.1 million, and you know we had a very good year last year, and it varies from month to month, but that's a great start to the season, and 5.5.4, which is the project status. I just noticed uh, the, the staff report, there's 40 open files going forward on, on a number of 
developments throughout town. So uh, again, we're 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 a forward-thinking municipality. There's a lot happening here, and I really appreciate that uh, very uh, very good report. Thank you, Mr. Heron. Do you have anything to add? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, despite COVID, we're not seeing a slowdown, and if anything, we're seeing an increase in development and investment in Wasaga Beach. And the reason I asked if I could speak was because in my project status update, there is so much happening that there are some projects I forgot to mention in my report, and they're worth mentioning. Um, one of the projects is a, a 50 unit four story building uh, at the old Alastonia project uh, property that's at the very north end of Beck Street and River Road East. Um, staff intend to enter into an agreement with the developer within the within the month and we expect that project to go to construction uh, this summer. Uh, and then there's a second project it's um, a gas station at the northeast northwest corner of River Road West and Theme Park Drive, so across the road from where the new arena will be. And that's a Petro Canada with a drive through and a Burger King. Um, that's under new ownership and that's another one that we expect that we will be securing site plan approval within the month and with the expectation that they'll go to construction this summer. And then um, there's two other projects on the um, policy planning and special projects uh, topic of the report. Um, we currently have a memorandum of understanding with the Nottawasaga Valley Conservation Authority. The sunset on that is in June of this year and we anticipate entering into a discussion and working on an update to that MOU over the next six months. That will be um, a special project that we'll be working on, especially in light of the new uh, legislation for conservation authorities that is currently in place. And then another item uh, that I failed to mention in my report, and this is something that has occurred since I wrote the report, uh, the County of Simcoe is commencing, commencing uh, a municipal comprehensive review. This is a, a major planning exercise. It's directed by the province um, to meet goal, uh, growth plan criteria. What we didn't anticipate in that county review is that the county will be turning to the municipalities to perform uh, a goodly part of the research work that they need. Uh, we didn't anticipate the work hours involved there. And um, so that's uh, a major project that will be underway for this year that we will have to find uh, a way of fitting into our work program. Uh, so there is quite a bit of growth happening both on the ground and in the policy area and um yeah busy times there are, there are worse things than being busy right now councillor uh, wells you have a question thank you mr chair doug just a quick question i'm uh, intrigued by the fact that the county is going to want a great deal of work from the town in terms of the research are they funding the additional cost to the municipality through county funds uh, thank you for your question, Councillor Wells. At this point, I don't have an answer for that. Um, the only discussion we've had was an introductory um, Zoom meeting on Monday morning, and the county um, described their project work plan. And in that project work plan, it uh, identified a number of areas where they would be coming to the, the municipalities uh, for research work and discussion work. Now we had anticipated that there would be some um, uh, connection between us. Uh, we knew that there would be discussion, but we didn't anticipate that there would be uh, a level of work involved. So we're still trying to understand exactly your question. Uh, I, I don't have a complete answer for your question. Thank, thank you, Doug. I guess I would just simply say then to the mayor and the deputy mayor who sit at the county level, uh, I'm all for supporting the county's projects. I'm all for helping them out. But uh, certainly I think they have a responsibility if, we're ex uh, if we are experiencing additional costs uh, far and above what we were expecting for our department, then there has to be some payback from my mind from the county. They've undertaken this project. They should be uh, supporting it. Okay, thank you for that. Your Worship, you wanted to speak to that? Um, thank you. I'm just looking for clarification from Doug. Is this dealing with the regional government review or is this something separate that you're referencing here? Thank you, Your Worship. It is something separate. Okay. Um, the, um, it's, it's directly uh, related to the growth plan. The province updated its growth plan and uh, 
it has to do with employment land numbers for the County of Simcoe and population projection numbers for the County of Simcoe. And um, the County is looking to uh, update its own official plan, which was only just recently approved um, and incorporate those growth policies. And it's a question of where should the employment numbers be directed in the County and, and uh, the same thing for population. Um, while the town of Wasaga Beach is a high growth municipality and an urban municipality, so we would meet uh, a lot of the criteria for um, a place where we ad would anticipate uh, receiving some of that growth uh, in those OP policies, we are not identified as a primary settlement area under the growth plan. Um, so I guess the simple question to your question, the simple answer to your question, I'm sorry, is no, it is something different. Um, and we don't understand at this point how it relates to the regional government review as well, because there could be a, uh, a change in how services are delivered. Um, so how does that weave into the discussion on the municipal conflict comprehensive review, I, I think is a factor. Your worship follow up. Yeah, and I would just say um, through the regional government review, um, as the chair of that committee at the county, I can say that um, nothing coming out of that is to be that extensive um, for municipalities that, that their staff would be that involved in it. Um, I definitely will be reaching out uh, to the county today just to find out um, what, what was shared with um, the different municipalities and what level of interaction they are expecting or looking for so we can have a, a clear understanding of that. And uh, to Councillor Wells' question, I will, I'll find out and I'll let uh, Council know. Thank you, Worship. Thank you, Doug. Is there anything else on that item? Seeing none, I'll read it. <coughs> that development services section of coordinated committee receives staff report uh, building de uh, department activity summary for January of 2021 for information mover please councillor Kenny seconder councillor Watson all those in favor please and that's carried unanimously thank you the 5.5.4.2, Councillor Watson, you hinted it might have already been covered, but since you pulled it, we're going to have to read it anyway. So do you have any further comment on that? <clears throat> All right, seeing none, um, I will read 5.5.4.2. That's the Director of Planning and Economic Initiatives report dated February 11th, 2021, Planning Department and Project Status Update. Uh, resolved that the devel development service sections of coordinated committee recommend that council accept the following report summarizing the planning department project status update for information. And as Councillor Watson pointed out, it, it's all good news. So Councillor Belanger, you're chomping to move that. <laughs> and a seconder, please. Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Bray, please. And all those in favor. That is carried unanimously. And I believe that wraps up everything on the on our section. So I will pass it then over to Deputy Mayor Bray, I believe, as general government. It's to you, ma'am. Thank you, Councillor Foster. Uh, welcome to the general government section of coordinated committee. Today we have no deputations, presentations, petitions, or public meetings. Uh, there's one item on unfinished business that uh, will remain there for another month. No other agency reports, and we move into our consent agenda. So the following items have been pulled for um, further discussion and a separate vote. 6.5.3, 6 6.5.4, 6.5.5, 6.5.7, 6.5.8, 6.5.9, and 6.6. Um, as well as 6.7.5, 6.8.1, and 6.8.2. Is there anything that I have missed in that selection? Okay, seeing none, I will read the, uh, the resolution. It's resolved the general government section of coordinated committee hereby receives the February 11, 2021 consent agenda, items 6.4 through to 6.7, 
and that the recommendations contained therein be adopted, excluding the agenda items pulled from the motion, which will be voted on separately. If I could have a mover and a seconder. Uh, moved by Mayor by Fulci, seconded by Councillor Wells. All in favor? And that carries unanimously. The first item to be pulled was item 6.5.3, the CAO's report dated February 11th, 2021, Restaff Recognition Update. And I believe that this was pulled by Councillor Belanger. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Bray. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, I was uh, a little surprised uh, that there were only uh, five uh, members of our team that uh, were identified for recognition. So at my, my first question, I, I guess of the CAO, uh, were all uh, department heads solicited to submit team members and a reason why they might uh, be considered for recognition? Through you, uh, Madam Chair, to the Councillor, uh, no, they were not. Uh, this is initiative that uh, comes out of my office. Okay, I, uh, I would think that that could have the potential of missing some pretty good extra effort, but uh, uh, will uh, Council be provided the names and a brief summary of the extra effort that resulted in an average $3,000 recognition so that we are able to congratulate these uh, people ourselves. Thank you through you, Madam Chair, to the Councillor. No, we will not be providing the individual names. Um, certainly in the report I've outlined uh, general, in general terms what the individuals did to uh, receive such recognition, but the, the employees have preferred to remain anonymous. Thank you. Anything else, uh, Councillor Belanger? Okay, seeing none, I will ask for a mover and a seconder. Councillor Kinney and Councillor Foster. Uh, resolve that the general government section of coordinated committee recommend to council that it receive the chief administrator's office CAO's report, um, updated report on staff recognition. All in favor? Opposed, if any. So that carries uh, six to one with Councillor Belanger in opposition. The next item pulled is 6.5.4, Director of Legislative Service and Clerk's Report dated February the 11th, read the closed meeting procedural bylaw. And this was pulled by Councillor Kinney and Councillor Belanger. Would you like to go first, Councillor Kinney? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I want to thank uh, Dina for her report. It was put together quite um, well, um, but I, I won't be in favor of voting on it, and I'll explain that I feel that closed door matters are very sensitive, and although there is a caveat there for sensitive more sensitive matters to be pulled and we meet in person. Um, I feel that all items, if they're in closed door, are of that status. Um, and I just reckon, you know, think of the time when we, we as a council sat in chambers in closed doors and as a result of um, nobody's fault, just automatic human muscle reflex, you hit the button and you go live. Um, things like that can happen. And if it's that sensitive and we have to go and close doors, then we should be making sure that it's as closed as possible. And um, maybe I'm old fashioned, but I feel that as a result of um, doing virtual closed door. Um, for example, I'm sitting in my house and I'm wireless. Um, I'm concerned about things being grabbed. Um, but that's my thoughts and I just wanted to share them at this time. And again, I thank um, our clerk for her report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Kinney. Councillor Belanger. Yeah, thank you, Deputy Mayor Bray. Uh, uh, for, first, I will say that I'm not, not opposed to uh, virtual in-camera. I, I, 
our, I had asked a question previously of our mayor and she had indicated that the county and uh, other municipalities are doing it. And I'm uh, comfortable that we would have the proper security in place. But there, there, there are a couple of discussion points that uh, I'd like to cover for clarity that may be considered to add a, a few more uh, details uh, to the motion. Uh, one would be that, uh, you know, with COVID or other emergencies, the, the province provides direction. And uh, in this report, it doesn't indicate at what level we would uh, necessarily go back into in-person meetings. So in other words, are, is it going to be, uh, you know, we're allowed to meet 20 people in person, 25 people in person, 10 people in person. Uh, I know, uh, I think at a previous meeting, we discussed that 10 is probably too light, but I think there should be a number uh, that's added to the report that says if the provincial guidelines or medical health guidelines allow us to meet uh, 25 people that we would uh, then go back to in-person meetings. And that would be, of course, uh, divided into two sections. What would it be for council and staff only? And then what would it be for council staff and general public? The other one, this might be just a point of clarification for me. In 6.05, Two, uh, it, it in in one it indicates that we would be in a state of emergency, and I'm assuming this would be uh, referring to still being in a state of emergency. But it says, when in the opinion of the mayor, in consultation with the clerk and CAO, that is optimal to hold electronic meeting. Uh, I'm assuming that that is only when we are in a state of emergency; that there would be no other reason other than uh, that situation. And then the, the final point uh, that uh, wasn't clearly addressed in the report is whether or not a portion of council could attend a uh, in-camera meeting while the others are in person. Like, for, uh, you know, we, we, we do run into situations for health reasons or uh, whatever. And then is there any criteria? Like if you're on vacation, could you be allowed to, uh, you know, you're out of the country, but you could be allowed to attend a, a meeting uh, remotely in camera. I think there just needs to be a little more detail and clarification. Thank you. Madam Clerk, would you like to comment? Certainly through you, um, Madam Chair. Um, there's a lot to go over here, but um, to start with, um, this report isn't talking about when council would um, get back to in-person meetings in general. This report is really um, just amending the procedural bylaw to allow closed meetings to happen virtually um, for the reasons outlined in the report. I think we would uh, discuss that as the province begins opening up and we start to see um, you know, a vaccine rollout, and we start to see um, the ability to meet more in person, then um, I think we would look into um, bringing back our regular in person meetings. Until then, I think we will um, continue with our um, virtual meetings as a whole. Um, in regards to um, what if portions of uh, council can meet, um, Certainly we would have quorum. Our quorum rules would always apply. Um, and certainly with this change, if there was a member that could not meet in person, they would still be able to participate virtually. Um, and I'm sorry, I think that, that um, to add um, anything to the motion, I don't think is required for that part of it. Um, does that answer you, Councillor Belanger? Uh, yes, but uh, as I said, I don't think it indicated in the report. It had come up previously whether a single uh, council member uh, could participate remotely when the rest of council was in person uh, and whether or not there needed to be any guidelines around that. Thank you it's still available for council members to meet should they choose virtually. 
Thank you. Uh, next in line was Councillor Foster. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> and again, I was going to point out, I was going to do a point of order there. We're talking about only in camera meetings, not general meetings of Councillor Committee. So that's uh, irrelevant at this point. And I, I agree, we have to wait until we see where we are on COVID. The other part <clears throat> to address perhaps um, something Councillor Kinney brought up. And again, I've I have a different perspective on this because early on in COVID, I had to miss in-camera meetings because there was no uh, uh, no changes allowed for in-camera meetings uh, at that time. Later on, we did do an exception to the, the rules um, was granted to me so I could attend electronically um, due to health reasons. And I do believe that that's absolutely necessary, not only not only from the point of view of, of when an emergency is declared, but should someone uh, have a health issue, whether it's immune or compromised or mobility, they're, you know, in a car accident, they can't get around, they, but they're able to, willing and able to attend, they should be able to, and the provincial government has has allowed that. So, so I agree with that. Um, to the to the idea of of um, you know being in a in a open space in your home uh, in camera meetings always come down and it's mentioned there to personal integrity. I continue to be shocked um, that I hear from time to time items that were done in camera being mentioned in the public, more or less accurately. Who knows? But. But it all comes down to personal integrity. So if if a member of council doesn't have that personal integrity, they should never be in an in-camera meeting. Um, and again, I think that was it. I had, I just was doing some notes is, uh, you know, I do believe there's, there's an absolute place for this, certainly when the province or the town is declared an emergency for whatever reason, uh, that flexibility should be there. And as a member of council, all of us are here to serve the public that voted for us at all times. And, uh, you know, there should be a method that doesn't endanger ourselves or others if we, uh, if we want to partake. So those are my comments, and I'm in favor of the, uh, of the report as, as presented. Thank you. Any more comments? Seeing now, I was just going to say we, we have been doing in-camera at county since I joined county council, so I have a, a high level of comfort with the technology. I think it's tried and true and tested, and we are using uh, similar software, so I, if that in any way helps Councillor Kinney feel comfortable, um, it, it works at the county level. Um, Councillor Foster pointed out that, uh, you know, breaches go back to, to us as elected members having taken our oath, so I think... Um, opening this up just expands accessibility for councillors, members of council to uh, serve the public. So I'm fully in favor. So seeing no more comments, I will read the motion, which is that council adopt amendments to procedural bylaw for the purpose of providing for in-camera meetings to be held electronically. If I could get a mover and a seconder, Councillor Foster and Councillor Wells, all in favor? And any opposed? So that's six one with Councillor Kinney in opposition. Thank you. Moving on all the way down to 6.5.5, the Director of Legislative Service and Clerk's Report dated February the 11th, 2021, read the delegation of powers and duties, the policy review and update. And this was pulled by Councillor Belanger. Yes, uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, Clearly, uh, in the in the past, there's a couple of delegated authorities uh, related to uh, lifting of hold age of developments and uh, uh, the uh, recognition program employees that I had voted opposed to. Uh, so I uh, will be voting in opposition to to this. We don't have to go through. There's a lot of little pieces. Most of it is uh, very administrative, uh, pretty minor things, but. If council does approve uh, this motion, I'm, uh, my recommendation would be to ensure uh, the utmost transparency that any delegated authority granted and decisions rendered should be recorded in the appropriate section of coordinated committee on a monthly basis. Thank you. 
Any more comments or questions? Seeing none, resolved that the General Government Section of Coordinated Committee received the report pertaining to review and update of the Delegation of Powers and Duties Policy, Policy 1-3, to for information, and further that Committee recommend to Council that Policy 1-3 be adopted as updated, and that Bylaw 2016-102 be repealed and replaced with the proposed updated Delegated Authority Bylaw. Can I have a mover and a seconder, please? Councillor Wells? Madam Chair, I think uh, you wanted a question. Sorry, uh, can, uh, so I have council, moved by Councillor Wells, seconded by Councillor Foster, and there's a question, Councillor Kinney? Yes, Madam Chair, and I apologize for interrupting. I just noticed that our CAO had raised his hand, and I just wanted to notify you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. George? <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Kinney, and thank you, Madam Chair, for recognizing me. I just wanted to point out that what uh, Councillor Belanger is, is uh, suggesting or, or uh, recommending is not the norm with respect to delegated authority uh, under, under um, these types of bylaws. Uh, typically, the authority is granted and um, staff implement as per the requirements and uh, we carry on and I think that's pretty consistent. Um, and I just wanted to, just wanted to mention that. Thank you. Thank you for addressing that. I have read the motion, all in favor? And opposed if any? So that carries six one with Councillor Belanger in opposition. Okay. Skipping over one, we go to 6.5.7. The CAO's report dated February the 11th, 2021. Three status of agreement with Zancor pertaining to the town business park. This has been pulled by a number of uh, members. So I will start with uh, the one who hasn't spoken yet, Councillor Watson. Thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Mayor. Um, very happy to see um, some revival of uh, discussion on the business park. This has been something I've been wanting to see for, for quite a while, but I ha do have a couple of questions. Um, do we know at this point what the intention of Zancor will be to market these lands? Is it going to continue to be marketed as a business park or something other than that? Mr. CAO? Thank you uh, through you, Madam Chair, to uh, Councillor Watson. So there is a, a development concept that uh, Zancor has put forward. I'll let the uh, Director of uh, Planning and Economic Initiatives speak to it uh, specifically. Um, they are proposing to modify the, um, the permitted uses within the business park to allow a greater variety. And again, I'll allow the director to uh, to speak to that. And this will be subject to planning staff as well as council uh, review. Um, good morning, Madam Chair. The, um, the uh, Zancor has submitted an application for official plan amendment and an application for zoning bylaw amendment to change the permitted uses on those lands. Um, they have not submitted an application for site plan or for subdivision yet. So uh, they've asked for change of use, but they've not proposed detailed design at this point. Um, the intention for development is for uh, along Lions Court, a mixed use development. So commercial um, at the ground floor with uh, mixed use on the upper stories of several buildings. Uh, the buildings uh, range in height, I think upwards of three to four stories. Um, the lands to the east abutting the current residential areas are proposed as medium density residential. So there would be a change of use that's being proposed from the commercial industrial to more of a residential commercial mixed use development. Um, we, we do have applications that have been submitted by Zancor. Uh, they are in the initial process of um, review. Uh, staff are just currently uh, reviewing them for complete application. Uh, and once that's determined, then a report would be coming forward, a public meeting scheduled. Um, 
we do anticipate that the issue of ownership would be addressed uh, prior to staff commencing the, 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 the full-on review of the application. Um, since the town owns the lands, uh, we have to clarify who is the proponent for the development of these lands. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, supplemental. Follow up. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, my second point is uh, in the five key points in the report, the fourth point refers to the, the town um, was, was to retain ownership of the park and trust for Zancor and agreed to provide title for, for the lots when Zancor was prepared to sell to prospective purchasers. Zancor would retain the proceeds from the sale as compensation for servicing the park. Now the the figure I see in the report is $2.5 million is what they invested into the park. Um, these lands may generate much more than $2.5 million. Um, are they going to retain all these or is the town not participating in those revenues? Because they're, you know, I, I don't see the point of, you know, if it generates $5 million, um, why are we not involved with that? Or will we be involved, I guess is a better question. Thank you. Mr. CAO. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair to the Council. I think those will all be discussion points um, with the with Zancor when we get to that stage. Uh, certainly there's a lot of time has passed, 15, 16 years. There's inflation factors, etc. Uh, those will all be topics of conversation with the with the developer. And you're satisfied, Councillor Watson? Okay, next, uh, Councillor Belanger. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Bray. Uh, yes, uh, some, some of mine are along the similar lines, but, uh, you know, this is a uh, data issue and uh, it's been discussed over time uh, considerably. And uh, I think it, it dates back to the fact of what, what I've been told, and I have no idea of the level of accuracy, is that. Uh, the developer was uh, servicing some lands adjacent to the business park. They were asked if they could uh, in, uh, put the services into the business park and on a handshake kind of agreement that wasn't firmed up for until a couple years later, uh, they, they went ahead and they uh, presented the uh, municipality with an invoice or a, or an estimate of two, two and a half million dollars. Uh, now clearly, uh, you know, the two and a half million dollars that was invested a considerable time ago, if, if we didn't pay, there would be interest charges on that. But I was going to uh, make a motion to refer back to staff for a more detailed review to provide counsel as to the history of this, but to look at what are our legal options. Like if we were to pay the developer their 2.5 million plus interest, uh, to Councillor Watson's point, uh, if these lands are rezoned as residential, it exponentially increases the value. Like we know that over the last 15 years, there hasn't been a single uh, sale related to industrial or commercial. So I, I really believe the town uh, needs to exercise whatever legal rights we have uh, to the best outcome for the Wasega Beach taxpayers. So, uh, and uh, and again, I, I believe that through this course of time, although it would create jobs, the town spent a considerable amount of money uh, marketing lands that uh, potentially uh, we weren't going to participate in the profitability of the, of the sale of those lands. But based on the CAO's comments, that maybe is still yet to be determined but but I, I i do believe we need to have a good uh, legal assessment as to what uh, the municipality's options are in this case uh, thank you thank you and councillor blanger this report is um recommending that discussion start so i don't think we're giving anything away at this point if the ceo could maybe comment Thank you, uh, thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor. Yes, uh, you know, Councilor Belanger, um, you know, his 
his early comments were based on what he understood or what he had heard. And some of that information that he just relayed is not correct. I won't go into a lot of the details, but uh, again, that's, you know, hearsay is hearsay can sometimes get you in trouble with respect to uh, relaying that. So, but yes, to your point, um, Madam Deputy Mayor, the, this is just to uh, seek authorization to commence the discussions. I wanted to make sure the council was aware that um, there have, has been a development proposal submitted and that, um, that I was going to start the, the discussions. So that was the intent. Uh, the, the issues that have been raised certainly will be part of the discussions. I think that due diligence will be done by both parties in this conversation and council will be involved uh, through, that, uh, through that discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary, Councillor Belanger? Yeah, just in clarity, the report does indicate to start the discussion on the transfer of the lands back to the developer. Uh, my comments where it suggests, is there any uh, legal capacity for the municipality to retain ownership of the lands and to compensate the developer for the two and a half million plus interest? Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Certainly, uh, you know, from my perspective, there is an agreement in place. Um, certainly from uh, the town standpoint, uh, we enter into agreements with, uh, with developers, companies, et cetera, et cetera, with the expectation that both parties are gonna fulfill their obligations under the, under the agreement. Um, the conversations will start and um, I will uh, consult uh, with our solicitor with respect to the agreement and, and we, will move, uh, we will move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Next question I believe came from uh, Councillor Kinney. Thank you, Matt, Madam Chair. I um, was wondering whether or not her worship wanted to speak on the last matter. Uh, <laughs> then I'll go ahead, thank you. Okay. Madam Mayor. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kinney. Yes, I was frantically waving this. I really, um, I, I think part of this discussion was getting into ne negotiation talk. And that is something that, as we know, happens um, in an in-camera session. And I'm not sure if it uh, was made clear, so I'm going to reiterate um, why this report is here. At the beginning of this term of council, um, you know, and some of us who have been here for many, many terms are, are well aware that this was something that happened years ago and it uh, was never finalized. And um, we need to get that finalized. And there was a desire, um, if I recall, at the beginning of this council um, term to um, get this wrapped up, get this sorted out and get something going. And um, there is a proposal that is being put um, to the town now. However, staff's hands are a little bit tied because of ownership. So I believe, and, and Mr. CAO, please clarify, the point of this report is so that, um, you know, Council is still supportive of going into negotiations and getting this sorted out, but at the same time, we don't want to hold up a development. Um, and by passing this motion, it gives staff the ability to continue to move forward with it. Is that correct? Thank you, um, through you, Madam Chair, to her worship. Yes, that is correct. Uh, although the uh, Director of Econ uh, Planning and Economic Initiatives has said, indicated that staff could only take the proposal so far uh, into, yeah. and until the ownership <laughs> is sorted out. So, but the recommendation yeah. is that at least staff accept the development, uh, the applications to uh, redesignate, and uh, at least that the, uh, the review process can commence. Uh, but as I said, it will only go so far. Thank you, Mr. CAO. Councillor Kinney, did you want to add to that? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, not just that I'm happy to see things moving forward at that development and other councillors have mentioned how long it's taken um, to get something moving forward and it's nice to see that going. And from dialogue I've had to residents, I think it's nice to see commercial maybe we will get some industrial in there however it's been 15 years and nothing's dropped in there but let's see if we can get things moving forward thank you madam chair thank you seeing no more 
comments, I will read the motion that the general government section of coordinated committee recommend to council that it received the report on the status of the agreement with Zancor pertaining to the town business park. The council authorized the chief administrative officer to commence discussions with Zancor on the transfer of the business park lands to Zancor based on the terms of the 2006 agreement with Zancor and any other matters that may arise during the discussion. That council authorized staff to accept a development proposal from Zancor for the business park lands for consideration by council. If I could have a mover and a seconder. Councilor Watson, Councilor Kinney, all in favor? And that one carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Okay, next is 6.5.9, Director of Finance and Treasurer's Report dated February the 11th, 2021, read the floating rate capital loan for $36,500,000 for the Main Street Bridge, the new arena, and the library. Madam Chair, and, if I can just interrupt, I believe at the beginning, um, you had also noted um, pulling 6.5.8. Perhaps that was an error? Must have been. Um, it does, it's not pulled on my copy unless somebody did want to talk about the accounting analyst's report, re-municipal grants. I believe since we pulled it, um, we should just pass the motion. Yes. Okay. okay. Can I have a mover and a seconder? Councillor Foster? Councillor Kinney? Um, Move that the general government services section of coordinated committee recommend to council that it approve the grants listed under average grant award column from appendix A to this report under the annual municipal grants program. All in favor? And that carries unanimously. Okay, back to 6.5.9. Um, this one was pulled by Councillor Belanger. And there was also a request that the um, motion be split into two. Would you like me to read that request before we discuss the motion? Or we'll let Councillor Belanger make his comments. Uh, I, I believe on upon request, the motions are split. It's not to go to a vote. It, uh, I'm going to support the loan related to one of the items and not support the loan uh, related to the other. Uh, my only other uh, comment was that I, I thought uh, that I had seen in a, an email at some point that the recent uh, infrastructure funding provided by the province, I believe it was just over a million dollars, was going to be uh, uh, contributed to the Main Street Bridge. I thought I had saw that. I can't confirm that. Uh, but my question was, is that, has that uh, funding been applied to the Main Street Bridge and there's still the additional loan required or is that going to be reduced? Thank you. Madam Treasurer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so the, the funding, the million dollars recently received, a portion of that does go to the Main Street Bridge and has been included in the calculations for what is still required for the Main Street Bridge. Thank you for the clarification. You're welcome. Okay, so as mentioned, the motion has been split into two. So I will read the first part. Uh, that General Government Services Section of Coordinated Committee recommend to Council that it authorize the Treasurer to proceed with the processing of the application for a floating rate capital loan agreement with Infrastructure Ontario for a term of five years from the date the loan funding is first accessed with a principal amount of $36,500 to finance the following two projects and HST requirements. The Madam first Chair, project... That's just $36,500,000. Sorry. Okay, I'm not sure what I said. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. First, uh, so number one is the Main Street Bridge for $3 million. And further, the committee directs staff to present the borrowing bylaw at the February 23rd, 2021 council meeting for ratification. So I would need a mover and a seconder for the Main Street Bridge. Councillor Kinney and Councillor Belanger. All in favor? And that carries unanimously. So then I will read the motion again. Should I start at the top? Madam Clerk? 
You can just indicate that it is as the as the in the agenda. Same okay. motion and in okay. addition. So then the the motion uh, six point five point nine. The first section is the same as the previous motion, and the second part would read that the. Um, Principal uh, to finance the following project: the new arena and library building of thirty-one million six hundred ninety-eight thousand and thirty-eight dollars, and HST refund cash flow requirements for the arena and library project of one million eight hundred and one thousand nine hundred and sixty-two dollars. I would need a mover and a seconder for this. Councillor Kinney and Mayor Bifolci, and all in favor. Opposed, if any, so that carries six to one with Councillor Belanger in opposition. Thank you. And the next item that was pulled was 6.6.1, .6 which is the departmental accounts, and this was pulled by Councillor Belanger. Uh, yes, thank you. I, I, I just had uh, uh, questions on uh, two of the entries. Uh, the first was 15904, which was point-to-point -point communication linked to Arena Library. Um, I, I didn't know if that's related uh, uh, to the new library or not, but whether or not uh, those amounts are being uh, charged to the, the new library project, or is that related to the existing library? And then the uh, second one was uh, 15836, which was uh, a payment of 5390 to Tatham Engineering for the master parking lot study. I, I thought that had been previously paid. And at the time when it was identified that uh, the municipality hadn't communicated the change in zoning uh, for beach area one to three to six stories across the entire beach and the removal or relocation of some streets it was indicated by the CAO that that additional review would be done at no additional cost. And I, I just want confirmation is uh, if this uh, $5,390 was over and above the original uh, contract for the master parking study. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Treasurer, are those questions you can answer on the fly or would you need to uh, to get back to us with those? Um, through, through you, Madam Chair, I believe um, the CAO might want to respond on some of these. I'll, I'll let him respond first unless he wishes me to proceed. Okay, thanks. Mr. CAO. Thank you, Madam Chair. I wasn't sure if you were going in the order that the questions were asked there. So I can speak certainly to the parking study uh, no, the, the extra invoice there was just uh, after we received the final report. Um, the report was in draft, it was accepted by council, and that was the last installment uh, to be paid. The uh, council had awarded the contract at about um, almost $40,000. It was a little over $39,850 in the final the final cost of the study was uh, 26,390. So it was substantially less than what was estimated. And and uh, Tatum was able to use some of the information that they had already gathered as part of the environmental assessment. So they um, didn't have to spend as much time that uh, they originally thought with respect to um, this particular project. And um, due to COVID, there was a public information center that was, uh, uh, proposed as part of the as part of the scope of the of the project and and that was not held so that was a savings to the to the municipality so the final as I said the final tally on this particular um, uh, this particular project was twenty six thousand three hundred ninety dollars which was substantially less than what uh, council had approved for the report thank you thank you for okay. that clarification thank you. Um, and there were two questions to your, or were they both answered? Sorry. Uh, the, the original question was just that whether the point to point communication was 
being charged to a communication budget or to the library budget, but it it, it said uh, linked to Arena Library. So I'm I'm assuming it's uh, uh, part of the information website that we paid to uh, link information. Uh, I just uh, I'm just wanting to make sure that. Uh, all of the all of the project costs are going to the right accounts. Thank you, Madam Treasurer. Thank you. Um, this uh, particular expense was related to uh, being able to have communications at, at the arena for um, parents to be able to view. Is is my understanding? And so this was charged as a COVID expense. Thank you. Thank you. So it was for the existing arena and library. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, if I could get a mover and a seconder for the accounts. Councillor Kinney and Councillor Wells, all in favor? And that would carry uh, unanimously. Okay, moving in to the next one, 6.7.5. Ministry of Energy, Northern Development and Mines letter dated January 28, 2021. Re-feedback on Ontario's long-term energy planning framework. And this was pulled by Councillor Kinney. Thank you, Madam Chair. In actual fact, uh, I'd like to have it read that it's 64 Ministry of um, Citizenship and Immigration Information Revolunteer Recognition nomination form. If we could pull that one, please. Was it just comments or did you want to change the motion? Because we have already voted on it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, in actual fact, I just want to make a quick comment on it, if, if I may. Thank you, Madam Chair. Now, really, really quickly, I just, I saw the recognition program and I'm familiar with it with my previous life with the OPP. And I used to nominate our, uh, our auxiliaries. And I'm just wondering, although we've missed the date this time, um, whether or not it might be a thought process to kick that information to all our other staff reps on our committees because they've got long-standing five-year, 10-year, 15-year uh, programs that some of them might be applicable. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kinney. So then I'm going to have to read the motion for 6.7.5 because it has been pulled. So uh, I will need a mover and a seconder that the General Government Services Section of Coordinated Committee received a letter dated January 28, 2021 from the Ministry of Energy, Northern Development and Mines pertaining to feedback on Ontario's long-term energy planning framework for information. And further, that this letter be referred back to staff and Wasaga distribution for review. I could have a mover, Councillor Foster, and a seconder, Mayor Bifolci. All in favor? And that carries unanimously. Okay. And the next would be 6.8.1. So we're moving into other matters now. The Director General Census Management Office for Statistics Canada letter dated January 13th, 2021, read the 2021 census of the population. And this was pulled by Councillor Kinney. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. Uh, just reviewing the report um, and the request through the um, organization to have us um, move it forward. I, I just definitely feel that census is so important uh, with regards to governments having accurate numbers and the ability to make wise choices on those numbers. So I'm just wondering whether or not um, we as a council could support this and also maybe have our communication officer, Mr. Jenning, do his magic and help promote this within our community. Thank you. Mr. Jennings is magical. Uh, I will read the motion that the General Government Services Section of Coordinated Committee received the letter dated January 13th, 2021 from the Director of General Census Management Office of Statistics Canada 
pertaining to the 2021 Census of Population, and further that committee supports the 2021 Census and encourages all residents of the Town of Wasaga Beach to complete their Census questionnaire online at www.census.gc.ca as accurately and completely and complete census data supports programs and services that benefit our community. I have a mover and a seconder. Councillor Kinney and Councillor Belanger, all in favor? And that carries unanimously. The next item pulled is 6.8.2. The Town of Collingwood email dated January 26, 2021, re-regional mayors and C AOs, COAs, of Roundtable Establishment of Regional, Regional Municipal Forum. That the General Government Services Section of Coordinated Committee received the email dated January 26, 2021, from the Mayor of Collingwood pertaining to the establishment of a Regional Municipal Forum for information. And further, that whereas Wasaga Beach Council is dealing with a number of issues that would benefit from regional consultation and collaboration, and whereas Wasaga Beach has a history of working with our neighboring municipalities in Simcoe County, Therefore, be it resolved that Council support the establishment of a municipal forum that meets regularly consisting of the mayors and CAOs of Wasaga Beach and our neighboring municipalities to discuss and work collaboratively to address local and regional issues. If I could have a mover and a seconder. So moved by Councillor Wells, seconded by Mayor Bifolci, and then it is now on the floor for discussion, so Mayor Bifolci. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say this is, um, I guess, basically formalizing something that already happens. We already um, are always in contact with our neighboring municipalities and our mayors. And um, I know the CAOs um, meet and, and discuss things as well. So I have no issue um, formalizing this agreement. It's, it's or this, uh, this uh, relationship, I guess, you know, we, we already have a good relationship. So, um, you know, there really won't be any cost uh, to it other than, you know, an hour here or there for the CAO and myself. And um, while I think it's it's important to look at regional opportunities, um, recently there's been a couple of times that, uh, you know, a municipality will throw something out there at their council meeting and we kind of find out after the fact that we're maybe being um, called out to be included in something. So I think that those, those discussions are better had uh, perhaps at a round table like this where you can talk it out and... Uh, um, look for opportunities together as opposed to one sort of taking the lead and um, putting putting others maybe in not such a great position sometimes. So I will definitely support it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Kinney, did you want to speak to this? Yes, please, Madam Chair. Thank you so much. Um, and echoing Her Worship's um, comments, um, I think the Regional Municipal Forum is a great idea. It allows uh, neighboring communities to work together and um, work on initiatives. Um, that's one of the things I actually campaigned on, trying to get outside our borders to, so we could work together and build um, bridges and not walls around our community and that and really recent not recently but in my past life again um, I was able to sit on a situational table through the um, a city of Barrie and I found it very very helpful when you get a bunch of like-minded individuals around you can find and you can see resources um, coming together and initiatives working so thank you Madam Chair thank you Councillor Foster. Thank you, Madam Chair. And again, I, I agree. I think we've had a history in Wasaga Beach of working with our neighboring municipalities. Um, and I see the, I obviously see the value to that. Um, it, to Councillor Kinney's part, it's not always uh, most useful when you have like-minded people around the table. Sometimes it's better to have people who are not like-minded to get the whole debate. My question merely is one of reporting is uh, uh, these meetings are great. Uh, I just wondered if there is a reporting uh, mechanism to council or committee that, that, you know, that we'd get some kind of minutes or something in the public forum. That's my question. Mayor Bifolci. 
Thank you. And that's something we'll have to get clarified by uh, Mayor Saunderson. He's um, put this motion out there, but there really hasn't, uh, those details haven't been clarified. Um, I think the intent that he has for this is that um, the municipalities can, can sit around if, if there's an opportunity for um, the municipalities to work together than on a specific project or something like that, or any commitment from a municipality that would absolutely have to come to the table for um, discussion by by everyone. Um, I think at this point, it's just seen as a connection point, but uh, I will definitely find out from what uh, his intent is for that, if there is going to be meeting or uh, meeting minutes and, and things like that, or if this is just an informal thing he's uh, trying to do. Thank you. I have read the motion and I had a mover and a seconder. Oh, so, sorry, Councillor Watson, you wanted to speak? Go ahead. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, I, was, I was just gonna comment, um, everybody Fulci touched on it, but uh, this is a resurrection of an initiative that started probably a couple decades ago. Uh, I know I was tasked under a former council and under a former mayor to attend some meetings in Collingwood over the old Laurentian Bank at that time to talk about shared interests in municipalities. At that time, it was actually more of a uh, movers and shakers of the business community in Collingwood and, and Wasaga Beach uh, talking about this and it never really went very far, but I'm happy to see it coming up again um, and, and be formalized as the mayor says. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so having read the motion, all in favor? And that passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, the final item on the general government uh, agenda is 6.8.3, the CAO's verbal update, re-COVID-19. Over to you, Mr. CAO. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, um, once again, I'm before you to provide an update uh, from staff with respect to COVID-19 and the command team activities over the last couple of weeks. The last time we were before you was uh, in late January. Uh, today I'm joined by our communications officer, uh, Mike Jennings, who's going to provide an overview from the provincial perspective in terms of initiatives from the province. And then um, our deputy fire chief is going to provide an update from the Simcoe Muskoka District Health Unit. And then I will uh, provide a brief update in terms of from the town and, and what we're doing at the command team table. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jennings. Good morning. Can everyone hear me okay? Very, very good, head nods, thumbs up. Uh, I'm gonna start back uh, on February the 5th with my provincial update uh, and sort of work my way forward. So that's the day the government said applications are now open for the Ontario government's new two-year $115 million skills development fund. This fund supports workers and apprentices and is designed to address the challenges brought on by COVID, uh, helping reduce obstacles to hiring, training, and retraining. And the fund will accept applications from a wide range of employment and training organizations. And uh, the focus is on giving laid off workers immediate access to training supports or new jobs. Also on February the 5th, uh, we saw January job numbers and employment in Ontario decreased by 153,500 jobs last month. However, in the last eight months, Ontario's employment numbers increased by 739,000. The January numbers were a bit of a shock, uh, the government says, and they serve as a stark reminder that behind every economic statistic is a family. February 8th, uh, we saw in-class school resume across our region and uh, anyone driving through Wasaga Beach will uh, see the schools are open and active. February 8th, the government said it was moving ahead with a regional approach. That was the big announcement the other day uh, and maintaining the shutdown in the majority of public health regions in Ontario, including the stay at home order and all existing public health and workplace uh, safety measures. They say that when it is safe to do so, they will gradually transition each region from shutdown measures to a revised and strengthened COVID-19 response framework that allows reopening. 
So for our region, it looks like the stay at home order will end on February 16th. Three Eastern Ontario regions uh, have moved to the green prevent level that took place yesterday. And Toronto and Peel and York will see the stay at home order apply until February 22nd. And of course, with all things COVID, uh, this stuff is subject to change depending on case numbers, but that's the latest as of right now. February 9th, uh, the province announced it will invest four and a half million dollars through the Seniors Community G Grant Program. Uh, this will support 180 diverse community projects. The funding will help nonprofit organizations, local service boards, and other groups develop and maintain a variety of programs that support seniors, especially during the pandemic. February 9th, Queen's Park said it is providing $7 million to help increase mental health addiction services for post-secondary students during the pandemic. The government says this funding will provide more supports for students on campus and uh, virtually. And February 10th, the government released the province's 2020-2021 third quarter finances. Uh, and it says this demonstrates their commitment to support individuals, families, and small businesses during the pandemic. That report shows the government is projecting to spend 25 billion more than last year including an additional 2.6 billion since tw the uh, 2021 budget. And these investments are being used to deliver such things as the Ontario Small Business Support Grant uh, to provide hospitals, uh, provide more supplies for hospitals uh, as well as PPE and to better protect long-term care homes and childcare uh, facilities. To ensure Ontario could respond quickly uh, during the pandemic, the government's budget plan built in what it's calling historic levels of support totaling $13.3 billion for 2020-2021. And the third quarter finances show that all of these funds have now been fully allocated. February 10th as well, the Minister of Energy said the province is once again extending the electricity rate relief program for families and small businesses. And the government will continue to hold electricity prices to the off-peak rate of eight and a half cents per kilowatt hour. This will be in place until February the 22nd. Um, we received word early this morning that the first round of COVID-19 vaccines have been administered in every long-term care facility across the province. Uh, to date, 62,000 long-term care residents have received at least one dose and more than 34,000 have received uh, their second dose. And finally, uh, we expect to hear today the government's plans for March break. There's been a lot of chatter in the news and on social media about whether March break will indeed happen. So I will keep everyone posted uh, about that. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mike. Was Craig next? I am. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair and uh, members of Council. My update this morning will include some encouraging information that's showing that the second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic is improving and nearly all public health measurements locally and provincially are now showing some positive progress and this of course will pave the way to the reopening of our province safely. Globally, there have been more than 107 million cases of COVID-19, including 2.34 million deaths. Nationally, we've experienced just over 813,000 cases, including 20,984 deaths. Provincially, we've seen more than 285,000 cases. This includes 262,000 recoveries and 6,559 deaths. The current number of Ontario residents hospitalized due to COVID-19 are 948. There are 313 individuals admitted to ICUs and a number of 226 on ventilators. The current provincial testing positivity rate has now dropped to 2.5% and to date the province has conducted over 10 million COVID-19 tests. 
Within the Simcoe Muskoka region, we now have a total of 5,810 uh, positive cases, including 169 deaths. To date, there have been 133 local cases uh, that have tested positive for the COVID-19 variant of uh, concern, which is UKB117. There are also an additional 86 cases that have screened positive for the variant, and we are awaiting uh, confirmation through the provincial laboratory to determine if those cases are in fact the variant. There are currently 32 individuals hospitalized within Simcoe Muskoka. The seven day moving average of cases in our region is now 34.7 cases per day. The percent positivity rate has dropped uh, to 2.2% and we now have 23 active outbreaks within our region and that includes 13 institutions, one congregate setting, one community setting, two education settings and six workplaces. Uh, there have been just over 23,000 uh, doses of the Pfizer vaccine that have been administered uh, through the Simcoe Muskoka Health Unit. And these uh, vaccines have been uh, administered mainly to this point to healthcare workers in local hospitals, as well as long-term care and retirement home settings. Uh, the number in includes 7,000 individuals that have received both the second, uh, first and second of their doses. And then in addition to that 7,000, 90% of long-term care residents and 65% of the retirement home residents through our region have now got their first dose of vaccine. Uh, finally, uh, locally in Wasaga Beach, as of yesterday, we have seen a total of 133 cases reported by the health unit. That number includes 110 recoveries. Uh, unfortunately, we're up to three deaths at this point. We still have one individual who remains hospitalized and have 19 that are recovering. The most recent case uh, listed for Wasaga Beach was on February the 9th, and we uh, no longer have any reported outbreaks. Um, so let's hope that it stays that way. Uh, Madam Chair, that uh, concludes my update, unless there's any other questions. Are there any questions? Seeing none, uh, Mr. CEO, back to you. Thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor, uh, members of Council. So I'm going to speak a little bit about um, command team activities and what we can anticipate from the province over the next couple of days. Uh, we expect an announcement uh, later today with respect to um, what uh, framework level um, Simcoe Muskoka uh, District Health Unit is going to be put into. Um, it could either be red, orange or gray and each of those levels has a, uh, has a different uh, tier of restrictions with respect to activities in the community activities at Town Hall, um, et cetera, et cetera. So as soon as we hear that information, we will endeavor to circulate that to uh, um, members of council. We will, um, as an organization, uh, revert back to how we operated, either under the orange or under the red, or continue as we are if we stay in the gray uh, framework level. On February 4th, um, staff, Town staff met with Ontario Park staff to discuss the spring reopening of Wasaga Beach Provincial Park. It was a it was a good review of the issues that arose in 2020. Ontario Parks advised that they will be returning to their normal spring opening protocols, um, i.e., how they opened the park in uh, 2019. Staff uh, will be working at the park and they'll be maintaining the park in accordance with their operating procedures. Staff raised the issue of the 50% uh, parking restrictions, specifically as it pertains to the parking restrictions at New Wasaga and Allenwood, Allenwood parking areas due to the impacts on neighboring local streets of cars spilling over. Uh, Ontario Parks said that they will uh, look at that. We pointed out that uh, the beach area at New Wasaga and Allenwood has uh, lots of capacity and that the parking areas, uh, even if they are full, uh, people have uh, lots of room to spread out. So uh, hopefully Ontario Parks will uh, apply a different strategy as uh, with respect to that in uh, New Wasaga and Allenwood. They are also reviewing uh, the messaging uh, that they deliver 
to the public with respect to the status of the park. As uh, members of council know, there was lots of confusion last year whether the park was open, not open. Um, certainly the messaging gets created uh, from Queen's Park, but it's not uh, exactly applicable to every provincial park within the province. And it runs, uh, the messaging runs into difficulty when you have parks like Wasaga Beach, which are um, within, uh, within urban municipalities. So certainly um, they're aware of our, our uh, comments on that and, and we will work with them um, to message what might be appropriate for, for Wasaga Beach. Finally, they are reviewing the opening of uh, their washrooms in the spring. Typically they open their washrooms in April uh, with nice weather last year and in previous years, there is a demand for some of the washrooms to be open earlier, especially as I said, if the weather is nice and uh, they're, they are uh, reviewing that. So all in all, it was a good meeting and uh, we will be continuing to meet to, to uh, review the plans for the spring reopening and I will endeavor to keep mem members of council uh, posted. With respect to uh, sharing information, um, we've taken the approach, uh, the deputy chief and I, to continue to share information that we receive from the health unit uh, from the province with respect to COVID. Uh, I certainly hope you appreciate receiving the information. Uh, it's a lot of information I realize, but uh, you may get uh, inquiries from time to time about what's happening and, and that gives you all the information as soon as we, as soon as we receive it. So we will continue uh, doing that. On the lines of sharing information, uh, back in, in January, I spoke about uh, offering the RecPlex as a vaccine center uh, for our part of Simcoe County. Uh, the Deputy Chief has been sitting on a task force looking at the uh, rollout of the vaccine in the county and um, there the county is looking at taking a, uh, a different approach as opposed to a bricks and mortar. They're looking at using their existing um, uh, remote um, Vac or testing centers as vaccine centers. So as members of council are aware, we do have a testing center at the RecPlex that people can drive through and, and have a test. Right now they're looking at doing that, um, enabling their testing centers to become vaccine centers. This is all being looked at and reviewed as we speak. But as I said, our deputy chief sits on this uh, task force. There are a number of planning committees that have been struck to look at the rollout over, over the county. Soon as there are sufficient supplies of vaccine in our area, um, we'll start to see the immunization rollout and we'll certainly keep members of council posted on that as, uh, as we become aware. Um, Finally, I just want to say, uh, members of council, that um, all our staff are back at work, working, and uh, we're happy to see them all back. And uh, it's, uh, we certainly learned from our experiences and we've updated our safety plans and our, um, our protocols. And can we continue to be diligent to ensure that uh, we're following all the, uh, all the COVID uh, requirements. Uh, Madam Deputy Mayor, that concludes my report. I'd be happy to take any questions that members of council may have. Uh, thank you. I saw Mayor Bifulci. Thank you. Uh, just a comment, really. I'm happy to hear that the discussions are going on um, early with Ontario Parks. I think it's important that regardless of what uh, zone color we're in for the, the summer dealing with COVID, that we are on the same page. Um, them cutting their, their parking in, in the Allenwood uh, area if they cut it by 50%, that really just creates more issues for the municipality and our bylaw department. So I think that uh, they need to be respectful of that. So hopefully you'll have answers on some of those um, things in the near future. However, I, I think if you're not getting those answers, I think we need to push a little bit harder to make sure that we have um, time to properly plan for the summer and not be um, waiting on Ontario parks or uh, our two forces kind of working against each other um, like we found last year. So. I'm glad to hear that the discussions are happening. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Wells, I saw your card, I believe. Thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor. Just a question to the CAO. Uh, as I travel Mosley Street uh, back and forth, um, 
it appears, uh, I stand to be corrected, but it appears like there is no activity at the testing center at the RecPlex. Have they closed that because of a lack of need or uh, am I misrepresenting the, uh, what, I, what I see as I drive by? Thank you through you, Madam Chair, to uh, Council Wells. I'm not aware that they've closed it. Um, our Deputy Chief may have further comments, but uh, nobody has formally advised uh, the municipality that in fact it is is closed. I know that staff have, um, have gone to the center to be tested. So I'm aware that uh, it is open from time to time. Perhaps the Deputy Chief can elaborate further. Uh, just before he does, uh, my reason for saying that is I just, have not seen cars there and the little hut that they had, you know, for letting you through to go to the back just seems to be uh, unoccupied uh, daily. So that was my reason for the question. Yes, thank you. Uh, through to Councillor Wells. Uh, no, this te testing center is certainly operational. I think what we're seeing is a extremely efficient, streamlined process. All of the tests are have to be pre-booked online ahead of time, and they give you a specific time to show up. So there certainly is flow going through that. Mr. CAO is uh, correct in that we have had staff as early as a few days ago go through to be tested, uh, and I think just th they've uh, figured out a way not to have the long line up in place. Thank you. Uh, next, I think I saw Councillor Kinney's request to speak. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to echo the same um, comments with regards to Ontario Parks. Um, it's great, and I hope we can get them on side with our concerns that we get, um, and rightfully so, from our residents down in the East End and overflow parking and the issues that they have down there. I mean, it's not only I mean, it's a major inconvenience for our residents down there, but it, it hampers emergency vehicles to get through those narrow streets too. Um, and just a final word saying, it's great to have our team back together healthy and well. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Watson. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. And talk about parking again. Um, there was an, an analysis or a study done last year uh, through bylaw where they were going to put up no parking signs throughout the municipality. Um, and I'm not sure if, they, if that all got completed or not. It should be looked into, I guess. I know along Mosley Street and Old Mosley Street, there was supposed to be uh, signs go up also, and I'm not sure if they all got installed. So if that can be looked into, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. Thank CAO, you. any? No, I just noted and our uh, new um, Senior Municipal Law Enforcement Officer uh, Rachel is on the on the call today, so I'm sure she heard uh, Councillor Watson's comments. So we'll certainly look into that. Thank you. Seeing no more comments or questions, I will read the motion that Council receive the February 11, 2021 verbal COVID-19 update from the CAO for information. If I can have a mover and a seconder, Councillor Belanger, Councillor Kinney, and all in favor. And that carries unanimously. So that concludes the regular portion of our meeting. We do have um, a closed session uh, agenda. It's my understanding that there was no need to meet in person. Can we continue to read these motions? Okay. Uh, do I, I still have to read that we go into closed session, clerk? Uh, no, we, since we were not going to convene in closed session, we would go okay. directly to 8.1. Okay, so we're now reading the reports from closed session, which were circulated to members of council. They've all had a chance to review them and chose not to have them pulled for discussion. So 8.1 from the Director of Recreation Events and Facilities, Schedule A to Item 3.5.4, with the Joint Use and Cost Sharing Agreement with S. CDSB, New Elementary School in the Sunnydale Trails, Trails Subdivision, Section 239-2A of the Municipal Act 2001 has amended the security of the property of the municipality or the local board. The General Government Services Section of Coordinated Committee receives Schedule A to Item 3.5.4, read the Joint Use and Cost Sharing Agreement with Simcoe County District School Board, New Elementary School in Sunnydale Trails Subdivision as provided in closed session. So I can have a mover and a seconder. Councillor Foster, Councillor Cuny, and all in favor? That carries unanimously. 
second item is the Director of Public Works Report dated February 11, 2021, Reg Legal Matters. Uh, section 239.2E of the Municipal Act 2001 as amended, litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality of the, or the local board. And the motion reads that the General Government Services Section of Coordinated Committee received the update from the Director of Public Works pertaining to a legal matter as provided in closed session. Once again, I would need a mover and a seconder. Councillor Kinney, Councillor Watson. And all in favor? That carries unanimously. And finally, the Director of Legislative Services and Clerks Report dated February 11th, 2021, read the sale of land, Plan 1369, Section 239-2C of the Municipal Act 2001, a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality or local board. And the motion reads that the General Government Services Section of Coordinated Committee confirm the direction provided to the Director of Legislative Services and Clerk in closed session pertaining to the sale of land. If I could have a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Kinney and Mayor Bifulci, all in favor? That motion carries unanimously, which I'm struggling with that word at the end of the meeting, and that leads to our adjournment. So thank you very much. And uh, as I think Councillor Foster mentioned, happy Valentine's Day to everybody. Thanks. Bye, everyone.